Hey, a pleasure and good day, everybody. This is Sports Time News. I'm Joe Bork, and I just did the AL West Division preview, so let's get into the NL West. As last year, it was between the Dodgers and the Giants. The Padres ran it for some of the year, but then fell off mightily towards the end. And then you got the Rockies and the Diamondbacks. So, we'll start with the bottom of the division, coming in fourth place in the NL West in my opinion, or coming in fifth place, I should say, there's five teams in that division, if I could actually count correctly, uh, would be the Arizona Diamondbacks. I don't think they are going to be that improved of a team. They got some guys that are at least name brands that are still somewhat fun to watch, good guys to have like Madison Bumgarner mainly to help develop guys. They brought in Zach Davies. They got Zach Gollin, who I still think we haven't seen the best from yet, the the kid from New Jersey, uh, Gibbs Burrow. Uh, they have Merle Kelly, so they have decent pitching. Ian Kennedy's in their pen again. Obviously, he's a former Diamondback. Mark Melanson, I think, was a very good pickup. That's going to be trade value for them if they aren't a good team. And again, I don't think they're going to be a good team. I have them as fifth. Oliver Perez is another good trade bait for a team. So is Caleb Smith. So is Luke Weaver. Basically, their most of their pitching rotation is trade bait for a team, except for guys that they decide these are guys we're hanging on to to build around. But I don't even know if the Diamondbacks are going to do that or if they're doing this whole Pittsburgh Pirates just wheeling, cycling thing mm-hmm. where they sometimes have a year that they're a little bit better than the Diamondbacks do compared to the Pirates, where it's been a while for that. But they're kind of just keep doing this wheel and cycling thing where they're not really able to get competitive, just like the Pirates. But they have veterans that are tradable assets. David Peralta, I think, will be traded by the deadline, as one example. Paven Smith's going to continue to develop, so that'll be huge. If Dalton Varsho takes the next step for them, that'll be huge. Basically, the Diamondbacks' season is just show progression, and they're set. So they're the fifth-place team as we move on from them. Uh, then we move into the Colorado Rockies, who are fourth. Uh, the Rockies, obviously... Uh, The big difference between their stadium and Arizona's is it is one of the most hitter-friendly. Even when they adjusted stuff, it's still one of the most hitter-friendly ballparks in baseball. And their pitching is not the sexiest on paper, where you could even argue Kyle Freeland is the most skilled pitcher on their team. He just hasn't looked it lately. Uh, Where then they also have a guy that's pretty underrated in German Marquez, but he has to also find more inconsistency and then he won't have that underrated tag. The lineup for the Rockies though with Crone, Iglesias, Connor Joe, uh, Ryan McMahon, Brandon Rogers, uh, obviously they added Chris Bryant. Uh, You have Blackman, Grichik. I think their lineup's going to be really good, but the problem with the Rockies is Compared to, I said this in the Rangers video about the Rangers, they they just really don't have the most proven pitching. And they're relying, it seems, on a guy like Julius Chassin, who's kind of at the end, at least it seemed like. He's going to have to refine it again. Kyle Freeland's really going to have to refine it again. Where at least if you're the Phillies, you have Zach Wheeler at the top of the rotation. If you're the Rangers, you went out and got a John Gray. They don't really have that in Colorado because German Marquez hasn't been able to find full consistency yet. Now, I think there's potentially more in German Marquez, but we've kind of said that for quite a few years now, so it's time to rise or shine, basically. And the reason I have the Rockies in fourth, even with their vast improvements continuing through the lineup and a couple improvements in the pen like Colome, is I have to believe it to see it, basically. It's kind of the same reason I have the Angels in fourth. I have to believe it to see it almost at this point with that team. Third place is going to be none other than the San Diego Padres. I don't think the Padres are going to move. I think the Padres are just stuck in a crap division for themselves. Uh, So are the Rockies, so to speak, as they try to get better when you have the Giants and Dodgers at the top of that division. But the Padres, they do have the pitching better than the Rockies. That's why I put them above the Rockies because they added Sean Maniah. They have Joe Musgrove. They have Blake Snell. I mean, their pitching is sick. Uh, if everybody can stay healthy and pitch well. They added Alfaro to Austin Nola. Um, so I think Alfaro is obviously a good hitting catcher. Nola is significantly better of the fielder. So it's going to be interesting to see. They have a potential rookie of the year guy, C.J. Abrams. They have Cronenworth. Um, I think they also have Crow Armstrong, if I'm not mistaken. Will Myers, Grisham, um, you got Profar. So I think this team is going to be a very good team. This year, it's just, 
I don't think they're going to surpass the Giants or Dodgers because the Giants didn't do anything to get worse. And the Dodgers obviously didn't do anything to get worse either. So I think it's just kind of one of those stuck in a hard place situations. And that's what has the Padres in third. Now, second, this is kind of more off a of feel for me. Obviously, on paper, the Dodgers are the sexier team. But off a of feel and just the mojo and the vibes the Giants give, I'm kind of also more of a, a go by vibes as times two and how you feel from reading and just paying attention to Gi- Giants podcasts and and listening to the athletic stuff on the, the Giants and reading stuff. It seems like they are going to be the first place team again because they're doing it right. Did they lose some guys? Yes, but they also made additions that led to not really having an issue with the subtraction, similar to how Olsen came in for Freeman. So obviously you don't want to lose Freeman if you're the Braves, but Matt Olsen came in. Well, if you're the Giants, you kept Alex Wood. You got Logan Webb. Uh, you got Carlos Rodon, who's a great addition. Littell now, who emerged last year, is going to get to continue to grow. You got Leon. You got Duvall, who's just growing as a reliever. De Sclafani, they were able to keep. They have Alex Cobb. So I think their rotation is underrated and set. I think Joey Bart is going to have a chance to be, because I don't think he played the qualifier games yet, be in the Rookie of the Year conversation if he did not play the X amount of games in that weird season to qualify for the Rookie of the Year. I'm not quite sure if he did, but either way, I think he's going to have a fantastic season, even if he did play the qualifier amount of games. You got Belt, Crawford, Dubon, Estrada, Flores, Estrada's kind of a name to watch, can field the ball really good. We know how much Gabe Kapler loves those guys. And then if Thyro Estrada can start hitting more, he'll probably put him in the lineup. He loves to go with the guy with the hot stick. They also were a team that were able to pick up a guy that I really like this pickup for them because Kapler's familiar with him from the Phillies organization, and I like the success he had here in the Phillies organization. They picked up Luke Williams for the bottom of the bench. They got Yastrzemski, Slater, Ruff, Pedersen, Jock Pedersen, great pickup for that ballpark. He's going to kill him to right field. And Steven Duggar, who I think is a late bloomer, perfect example of a guy that bloomed at 27 immensely in the MLB, and I think is going to continue to take off this year. Uh, so the Giants keep finding those guys. They found a late bloomer in Yastrzemski. They had a Latest bloomer in Slater, who had an offseason last year. Duggar's a late bloomer now. Um, Dubon was a late bloomer for them last year. He's going to continue to grow. So they're really getting these C prospects to turn into B prospects there. And that's huge for a team to show how they're developing correctly. And that's why I think the Giants are going to stay in first because they might not have the best on paper name brand team, but they continue to just have guys come up and play better than what's advertised, so to speak. So I think that's going to help them. And that's what's going to put the Giants in first. And then does anybody really need me to say why I think the Dodgers are going to be a top two team that's right behind the Giants again to be a playoff team? They're stacked. They're loaded. They have all the money in the world. And they continue to add to this team. The only concern potentially with the Dodgers, obviously, with Bauer not pitching for them, might be their pitching rotation. But even at the same time, that's still pretty loaded. So it's just about health at that point for the Dodgers. And as long as that's the case, I think they'll be fine. So to recap, Giants, Dodgers, Padres, Rockies, and D-backs in that order, please continue to subscribe down below to help us get to 230 or more by the end of April to keep the channel going and growing. Stay safe out there, everybody, and peace out.